In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the construction of character table of C2V point group based on the Great Orthogonality Theorem. The classes for C2V point group are E, C2, Sigma V XZ and Sigma V dash OEZ. The number of classes should be equal to number of irreducible representations. Since the number of classes is 4, number of irreducible representations will also be 4. The classes are written in the top row E, C2, Sigma V XZ and Sigma V dash OEZ. The irreducible representations are written in the side as 1, 2, 3 and 4. We will later name these irreducible representation following Mullican notations. Let L1, L2, L3 and L4 be the dimensions. Dimensions are usually the numbers that are presented in the class E. Dimensions take only three values 1, 2 and 3. First we will take it as L1, L2, L3 and L4. Summation Li square is equal to H according to great orthogonality theorem that is L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square plus L4 square is equal to H. What is H? H is the total number of operations. Here the operations are E, C2, Sigma V XZ and Sigma V dash OEZ. So we have four operations. So the value of H is 4. The total number of operations H equal to 4. Now L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square plus L4 square is equal to H. It will be true only under one condition. That is 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square is equal to 4. That means L1 square is equal to 1. L2 square is equal to 1. L3 square is also equal to 1 and L4 square is equal to 1. This can be written like this. L1 square is equal to L2 square is equal to L3 square is equal to L4 square is equal to 1. That means L1 is equal to L2 is equal to L3 is equal to L4 is equal to 1. All take the value of 1. For dimensions we cannot have negative values. So instead of L1, L2, L3, L4 will get as 1. This is the first step in construction of C2V character table. Next, the top row, the top row is first row, this row, will contain completely symmetric characters. That means no negative characters, only positive characters. And so, we will have all plus ones. Next, let xi, oi, zi be the unknown characters i equal to 1, 2, 3. What do you mean by that? With the remaining 9 boxes here, you place the terms x1, y1, z1 in the second row, x2, y2, z2 in the third row, and x3, y3, z3 in the fourth row. That is what is given in general as xi, oi, is I, where i is equal to 1, 2, 3. Next we have to find out the values of all these variables x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2 and x3, y3, z3. Summation gp ki square is equal to h. This is also from great orthogonality theorem. gp is the number of operations in a class. Here E is a class, there is only one E and so JP is equal to 1. 
C2 is a class, only one C2 and JP is equal to 1. Sigma V accessor is a class and there is only one Sigma V. So JP is equal to 1. And Sigma V dash O is a, is a class and there is only one operation in it. And so this will be 1. So 1, 1, 1, 1. That will be the JP value in this case. Next we have chi i square. This is a character of the irreducible representation. X1 y1 is at 1. X2 y2 is at 2. X3 y3 is at 3. What is xi? If we take i is equal to 1, it represents x1 y1 is at 1. If we take i is equal to 2, it represents x2 y2 is at 2. And if we take i is equal to 3, it represents x3 y3 is at 3. Th remember this is not x. This is chi i summation jp chi i square where chi i is the character of the irreducible representation here this are x1 x2 x3 not chi i ok now h value of h is 4 as you have seen previously the total number of operations e c2 sigma v x is at sigma v dash o is at is equal to 4 so summation jp chi i square is equal to 4 we will take one of the irreducible representations, this 2 and uh, gp is always 1 for for this point group because the number of operations in a class is 1 we have 1 square 1 square then x1 square x1 square y1 square y1 square and z1 square z1 square uh, equal to 4 next we will move on to the irreducible representation 3 we have 1 square 1 square x2 square y2 square and z2 square equal to 4 next we go to irreducible representation 4 for this we have 1 square then x3 square then y3 square then z3 square equal to 4 and in general it can be written as 1 square plus xi square plus y square plus z i square is equal to 4 where i is equal to 1 2 and 3 this will be true only when all these numbers are 1 this is already 1 if xi square is equal to 1 y square is equal to 1 z i square is equal to 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 will be equal to 4 so x i square is equal to y i square is equal to z i square is equal to 1 if you take the square root x i equal to y i equal to z i is equal to plus or minus 1 the characters of irreducible representation can be positive as well as negative whereas the dimensions have to be always positive so x i equal to y a is equal to z i is equal to plus or minus 1 now we come to the next condition summation jp chi i chi j equal to 0 summation jp chi i chi j equal to 0 where i and j represent two irreducible representations and jp is the number of operations in a class and if you take this summation this is equal to 0 now we will take two irreducible representations 1 and 2 first when you take gp is already 1 for all these of classes and 1 into 1 is 1 xi into xj is chi i into chi j is equal to 1, one into x1 x1 chi i into chi j 1 into y1 y1 and 1 into z1 z1 so 1 plus x1 plus y1 plus z1 equal to 0 then we will take the first and third irreducible representations 1 into 1 1 1 into x2 x2 1 into y2 y2 1 into z2 z2 then we will take the irreducible representations 1 and 4 1 into 1 1 1 into x3 x3 
chi a into chi j that is 1 into y3 y3 and 1 into z3 z3 so we have 1 plus x1 plus y1 plus z1 equal to 0 1 plus x2 plus y2 plus z2 is equal to 0 and 1 plus x3 plus y3 plus z3 is equal to 0 and in general we can write 1 plus xi plus yi plus zi equal to 0 now when will this be 0 when you have two ones plus ones the other two have to be minus ones because 2 into plus 1 is plus 2 and only if the sum of the other two terms is minus 2 plus 2 minus 2 will become equal to 0 if two terms are positive the other two terms have to be negative and based on this argument if any two terms are positive the two remaining terms would be negative only then the sum will be 0 based on this argument we can fill up like this now you look at these three irreducible representations second third and fourth two positive terms two negative terms two terms are positive two terms are negative two terms are positive two terms are negative now we are going, are going to name this irreducible representation they are known as Villigan symbols first we look at the numbers opposite the E class if it is 1 it is A or B if it is 2 then it is E if it is 3 then it is T 1 A or B 2 E 3 T in this case all the numbers are 1 if the dimension is 1 the symbol is A or B so the symbol can be A or B the next thing we are going to look is if it is symmetric to principal axis then this symbol is A there is only one axis here C2 and it is a principal axis if it is symmetric it is positive if it is anti-symmetric it is negative if it is symmetric that is positive then the symbol is A the first two cases this is positive to principal axis symmetric to principal axis so the symbol is A if it is anti-symmetric to the principal axis the symbol is B in these two cases it is negative minus 1 minus 1 that means anti-symmetric to the principal axis C2 and so the symbol is B now the next thing we are going to look is whether it is symmetric to sigma v xz or anti-symmetric if it is symmetric it will be plus 1 and if it is anti-symmetric it will be minus 1 if it is symmetric to the sigma v xz the symbol is a1 or b1 if you look at these two terms under sigma v xz they are positive terms and if they are positive the symbol is a1 or b1 so here we write it as a1 and here we write it as b1 either earlier it was a and b now it does become a1 and b1 on the other hand if it is anti-symmetric to the sigma v axis the symbol is a2 or b2 now if we are going to take under the sigma v axis where is minus 1 if it is minus 1 it is anti-symmetric if it is anti-symmetric it is a2 or b2 so this has become a2 and this has become b2 earlier it was a and b now it has become a2 and b2 so the names of the irreducible representations are which are 1 2 3 and 4 as marked earlier are now a1 a2 b1 b2 and we now know how we got those names next we have to perform the operations on orbitals symmetry operations are performed on the s p and d orbitals what do you mean by that these symmetry operations e c2 sigma v x z and sigma v o e z are performed on the symmetry operation s p and d orbitals then symmetry operations are performed on the rotation vectors r x r y and r z r x is the rotation vector about x r y is the rotation vector about y and RZ is a rotation vector about Z. 
when these rotations are carried out the results are studied what kind of combination of ones we get based on this we assign the corresponding term based on the above results rest of the character table is filled up for example we'll take the case of p z orbital p z orbital is p orbital along the z axis and when we perform the operation identity there is nothing that is done and so the same orbital will be repeated here the positive and negative lobe remain in the same place and so it is symmetric and so for E it is 1 now the next operation is C2 C2 is rotation about the Z axis this is the Z axis this is the Z axis I mean C2 is rotation about the Z axis when it is rotated through 180 degrees plus will remain as plus minus will remain as minus front lobe will go to the back and back lobe will go to come to the front but the plus and minus will not be interchanged and so it is symmetric and so for C2 it is symmetric next symmetry operation is sigma v xz sigma v xz is a molecular plane because this is x and this is z that is a plane that cuts these lobes into two halves one half of the positive lobe is above the plane and one half of the positive lobe is below the plane one half of the negative lobe is above the plane and one half of the negative lobe is below the plane and when you do the reflection the upper half becomes the lower half and the lower half becomes the upper half but the signs will not get interchanged and so it is symmetric next week I to command the operation sigma o e z there will be sigma o e z we have x z O will be perpendicular to both the axes so hold a sheet of paper perpendicular to the screen over the z over the z hold a paper or piece of paper perpendicular to the screen that will cut the slope into two halves there will be left half of plus and minus and right half of plus and minus when it is reflected about this plane the left half will become right half and right half will become left half but the positive and negative will not be interchanged and so it is symmetric and you get 1 1 1 1 where do you find this 1 1 1 1 in the character table against a1 and so z has to be returned against a1 this is the way operations are carried on the orbitals now based on this if you perform the operations on other orbitals this will be filled up like what we have now z is represented by a1 transformation of x is represented by b1 that is it is symmetric to e anti-symmetric to minus 1 but that means plus 1 minus will be interchanged symmetric to x sigma v x z but anti-symmetric to sigma v dash o e z that means lobes will be interchanged positive and negative lobes will be interchanged and that is why you find the x here against b1 and this is a complete character table in this character table c2 v is the point group and these are the symmetry operations or you can say the classes of symmetry operation in this case classes and symmetry operations are one and the same so this is the point of this is the symmetry operations and uh, these are the mulligan symbols mulligan symbols of irreducible representations and uh, here we find the characters these numbers are the characters and these are the results of operations on orbitals and rotation vectors so this is the construct character table for c2v point group thank you